Welcome to the Military Breakdown Podcast. Today, we're uh, diving into something pretty unusual that happened in the Red Sea. Yeah, what's that? An F-A-18E Super Hornet was lost overboard from the USS Harry S. Truman. Wow. Overboard? From the carrier itself? Exactly. So our mission today is to really unpack how this could happen, you know, understand the context, why the Truman's there, and what this might mean for operations. Okay, yeah, that's definitely worth digging into. Not your everyday event. And the good news, thankfully, is that it sounds like no one was seriously injured. Well, that's a relief. A multi-million dollar jet in the water is bad enough, but personnel safety is paramount. Absolutely. So let's get into the specifics. This happened um, Monday, April 28th, 2025. Okay. The aircraft, an F-A-18E Super Hornet, you know, the workhorse jet, it was being moved on the hangar deck. Right. Inside the ship, basically. The ca yeah. carrier's garage, so to speak. Precisely. They were towing it into the hangar bay and, well, somehow control was lost. Lost control during a tow. Mm. Yeah. And the jet, along with the actual tow tractor, slipped off the deck into the Red Sea. Off the hangar deck? That's unusual. Those decks have combings, raised edges, usually. How does that happen? That's the big question, isn't it? Investigation, we'll have to figure that out. Was it mechanical? Human error? Sea state, maybe, causing an unexpected roll? Could be any number of things. Towing procedures are normally very strict for exactly this reason. And think about this. There was crew involved. A sailor in the cockpit of the Hornet. Another driving the tractor. Oh, wow. Apparently, both managed to jump clear just before the aircraft and the tractor went over the side. Incredible presence of mind. That speaks volumes about their training. It really does. We did hear one sailor got a minor injury, but everyone's accounted for. That's the main thing. Absolutely. Avoided a much bigger tragedy there. So an investigation is underway, you said? Yeah, standard procedure. The Navy's official line is, uh, let me see. The F-A-18E was actively under tow in the hangar bay when the move crew lost control of the aircraft. The aircraft and tow tractor were lost overboard. Pretty direct. Concise, yeah. And they mentioned the squadron. Strike Fighter Squadron 136. VFA 136. Okay. And just for our listeners, moving jets around the hangar deck, even towing them, that's constant. Oh, yeah. All the time. Between the flight deck, maintenance bays, the hangar bay. Mm -hmm. It's a complex ballet down there. Needs precision. It really does. Yeah. So a failure like this is significant. Now, the uh, the expensive question. About $60 million worth of jets sitting on the seabed. $60 million. Wow. Are they going to try and get it back? That's what I was wondering. What goes into that decision? It sounds incredibly difficult. Well, several things. First, how deep is it? The Red Sea can get very deep. Yeah. Then the condition of the aircraft, is it intact? Also, critically, are there sensitive technologies on board they need to recover to prevent them falling into the wrong hands? Right, the tech aspect. And finally, just the sheer cost and risk of a deep sea recovery operation. It's a massive undertaking, potentially dangerous too. So not a simple decision at all. Okay, let's zoom out a bit and talk about the ship itself, the USS Harry S. Truman. Right, the platform this all happened on, a Nimitz-class carrier. <sighs> Nuclear-powered, these things are huge. Give us some perspective. How big? Uh, launched mid-90s. Mm. She's over the 1,000 feet long, like three football fields, can do over 30 knots, carries about 90 aircraft, maybe a mix of jets and helicopters, and the crew, over 6,000 people. It's literally a floating city and airbase. A floating city that's been pretty busy lately. It's been deployed in the Middle East region for months now. Correct. And not just deployed, but actively involved in, well, heightened operations, especially concerning the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Yeah, we've seen reports through U.S. Central Command talking about daily strikes, fighter jets, bombers, ships, drones. And it's almost certain that aircraft from the Truman's air wing have been part of those strikes. That's why it's there. And the deployment's already been extended once, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Which tells you how critical commanders feel its presence is right now. And this uh, incident with the jet, it's not the first bit of news involving the Truman on this deployment, is it? No, you're right. Back in February, February 2025, she was involved in a collision. A collision? With what? With a merchant vessel happened in the Med near the Suez Canal entrance. Wow. Any serious damage or injuries then? Thankfully, no. Reports at the time said no injuries, no flooding, but still, a collision involving a carrier is a big deal. And wasn't there a change in command around that time or shortly after? There was, yes. 
Captain Dave Snowden was the CO during the collision. He was later replaced by Captain Christopher Hill, nicknamed Chowda. Chowda, okay. And interestingly, Captain Hill had previously commanded the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Ike, during some really intense combat ops in that same region. So he came in with recent relevant high tempo experience. That experience must be incredibly valuable given the current situation. You'd have to think so. Despite this latest F-A-18 incident, the Navy statement emphasized that the carrier straight group and its air wing remain fully mission capable. Right. They want to project readiness. Yeah. Makes sense. Essential messaging in that kind of environment. Okay. So that leads us nicely into the wider context. Yeah. The Red Sea operations themselves. The Truman isn't just sailing around, it's there because of this ongoing crisis. Exactly. This whole situation really flared up back in October 2023. Houthi attacks on commercial shipping started escalating dramatically. And the Houthis. Remind us. They're an Iran-backed Zaidi Shia Islamist group. They control significant parts of Yemen, including the capital Sana and key Red Sea ports. They link their attacks to the Gaza conflict, but it's also tied into wider regional tensions. Iran-Israel, Iran-U.S. proxies, the Yemeni civil war itself. It's complex. And the impact has been huge, right, on global shipping. Massive. Major shipping lines rerouted vessels away from the Red Sea and Suez Canal, going the long way around Africa instead. Huge disruption to supply chains, increased costs. It affects everyone. So the U.S. and allies responded. Yeah. Operation Prosperity Guardian was set up in December 2023, a multinational naval task force basically trying to protect shipping. And alongside that, the U.S. and U.K., sometimes with other partners, have conducted numerous airstrikes against Houthi targets inside Yemen. Targeting what kind of things? Missile launch sites, radar installations, weapons depots, drone facilities, trying to degrade their ability to launch these attacks. Because the weapons they're using aren't exactly primitive, are they? No, not at all. We're talking surface-to-surface -surface ballistic and cruise missiles, anti-ship missiles, long-range artillery rockets, these loitering munitions or suicide drones, other UAVs, often based on or directly supplied Iranian designs. Some reports suggest Russian or Chinese links for some tech, too. It's a serious arsenal for a non-state group. And the attacks have been pretty constant. Very frequent. Throughout 2024 and into 2025, there have been dozens, maybe hundreds of incidents. Missiles and drones launched towards Israel, but mostly targeting commercial ships and sometimes coalition warships in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. Have the Houthis ever claimed to target the Truman specifically? Yes, they have. There were claims in January, and again in March of this year, 2025, that they launched attacks against the Truman. Now, whether those attacks actually occurred or were successful is often hard to verify. Independently, U.S. forces usually intercept threats or the claims are exaggerated. But the claims themselves show the intent and the threat environment the Truman is operating in. Absolutely. And that brings us back to the deployment extension. The continued threat is likely the key reason why the Truman and its strike group are still needed there. They provide significant defensive capabilities and strike options. Right. It paints a really clear picture of a very tense, very active operational zone. Okay, let's try and uh, bring this all together. Okay. We had an F-A-18 Super Hornet lost from the USS Harry S. Truman. Slipped off the hangar deck during a tow in the Red Sea. Thankfully, no serious injuries, quick reactions from the crew involved. An investigation is underway to figure out exactly how that happened. And this all occurred while the Truman is on an extended high-tempo deployment. A deployment driven by the ongoing Red Sea crisis, involving frequent Houthi attacks on shipping, which has led to international naval responses like Operation Prosperity Guardian and coalition airstrikes. And this specific incident, losing the jet, even though it wasn't combat related, it really highlights the inherent risks and challenges of just operating these complex machines, these huge carriers and advanced aircraft in such a demanding environment. Things can go wrong even during routine procedures. So here's something to maybe chew on, a final thought for you listening. What does an incident like this, a non-combat loss of a very expensive, very advanced piece of equipment, tell us about the real world strain yeah. and the logistical challenges of sustaining these kinds of long-term, high-intensity naval operations in a place like the Red Sea? It's not just about the shooting, is it? No, it's about maintenance, logistics, personnel tempo, the sheer wear and tear, oh. all happening under constant pressure. It's a fascinating, complex picture. We definitely like to hear what you think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you found this breakdown useful, please share it and make sure you subscribe to the Military Breakdown Podcast. And check out our other episodes, too, where we dive deep into other military topics. Thanks for tuning in.